Hello class, welcome to Pre-Algebra Lesson 1-2, which is all about variables and expressions. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to translate verbal phrases into algebraic expressions and evaluate expressions containing variables. So remember the word evaluate means to solve. So that's when you get just a single number as an answer. Let's look at example one, translate phrases into algebraic expressions. The directions say to translate each phrase into algebraic expressions. Uh, this is really similar to yesterday, except today we're going to have a variable or a letter as part of our answer. So letter A, 35 more than the number of tickets sold. So I know 35, I'm going to translate into a number. More means that I'm going to add. And then number of tickets sold means I, I don't know what that number is, right? It's not saying like five tickets were sold. It's just saying the number of tickets sold. Since I don't know what that is, I'm going to use a letter. So you can either use T for tickets, or if you're worried that it looks too much like a plus, you can change that to any letter. So I'm going to use X. And I'm almost done. So 35 more than the number of tickets sold. If you ever see the word than, you have to change the order. So whatever was last is now first. So I'm going to say X. And then I'm going to say plus 35. And that is my final answer. So anytime you see than, you switch the order of the number and the variable um, around the, in this case, plus sign, the addition symbol. Okay? So than means you switch the order. Letter B, the difference of 6 times a number minus 10. So difference means minus six times the number. I don't know what number that is, so I'm going to say six. I like to use x, so I'm just going to keep using x. So 6x minus 10. That's it. There's no van, so I don't have to change the order. That's all I have to write, 6x minus 10. So then on this example, I want you to translate the phrase eight less than the number of cookies baked into an algebraic expression. Good luck. Hopefully you ended up with letter A or C minus eight because it says eight less than the number of cookies. So you had to flip the order and start with the number of cookies and then subtract eight. So C minus eight. Here's another one for you to try. Translate the phrase, the sum of 12 and 5 times a number, into an algebraic expression. Good luck. Hopefully you said the sum meant you were adding, and then 12, you wrote down 12, and then 5 times the number is 5, and then in this case they used the letter N. If you put X or any other letter, that's also fine as long as it's in the same spot as that N. So 12 plus 5N would be your answer. Okay, so that's when you're just writing an expression. What if I ask you to evaluate the expression? So we have X minus Y plus 6 if X equals 27 and Y equals 12. So I have X minus Y plus 6. But I know that X equals 27, so I'm going to change my X to be a 27. And then y equals 12, so I replace the y with 12. And now it's just order of operations like we practiced yesterday. I have subtraction and addition. Those are on the same level of PEMDAS, so I go from left to right. So that means I start with 27 minus 12. That is 15. And then I have plus 6. I don't know why my marker keeps changing colors in the middle. Sorry. And then I have 15 plus 6. That is 21. And that is my final answer. Okay, so why don't you guys try this one? So you start by plugging in the numbers. I'm sorry, I'm trying to fix it so it fits on the screen. So we have evaluate 12 plus A minus B if A equals 7 and B equals 11. Good luck. Hopefully you ended up with letter C or 8, and hopefully your work matches kind of what I have over on the right-hand side of the screen. I replaced A with 7, B with 11. I started by doing 12 plus 7, because addition and subtraction are on the same level of PEMDAS, so I have to go left from right. So 12 plus 7 gives me 19. 19 minus 11 is 8. 
All right, so we're gonna keep working on that same idea, but we're gonna get just a little bit more complex. So evaluate each expression if x equals three, y equals four, and z equals seven. Sometimes the values are going to be in the directions like that. So make sure you're reading the directions on your homework, okay? So we have 6, and then instead of y, I'm going to replace it with a 4, minus 4. Instead of x, I'm going to replace it with a 3, because I got that from my directions up here. And then remember, if you have a number, parentheses number, that's multiplication. So I'm going to change that to 24. Minus, and then number, parentheses, number, parentheses, multiplication again. So 4 times 3 is 12. 24 minus 12 is 12. Then I'm going to go over to letter B. And I have parentheses, and then instead of Z, I'm going to write 7. Minus, instead of X, I'm going to write 3. Over, and then instead of Y, I'll write 4. So since I have parentheses, I start there. 7 minus 3 is 4. So I have 4 over 4, or 4 divided by 4. That's another way to write division. That is 1. That's my final answer. Let's move on to the last one. So z equals 7. So I have 5 times 7 plus 3 plus 4 times 4 minus 15. Okay, so that first step, I just plugged in all of the values I knew. I start with my parentheses, so 5 times 7 is 35 plus, and then I have 3 plus 4 times 4 is 16 minus 15. I keep going inside of my parentheses, 3 plus 16 is 19, and now I just have addition and subtraction left. So I have 35 plus 19. First, so I'm going to do that, and 35 plus 19 is 54. 54 minus 15 is 39. And that is my final answer for that problem. So this is another example where you get to try it. So evaluate 5p minus 3m if m equals 9 and p equals 6. Good luck. Hopefully you ended up at a uh, at 3, or letter A. Um, you did 5 times 6 to get 30, and then you did 3 times 9 to get 27, and you subtracted them. Then I want you to try another one. Evaluate P plus the quantity of 8N minus 3M if M equals 9, N equals 4, and P equals 6. Good luck. Hopefully for this problem, you ended up at 11 or letter D. You plugged in all of the numbers that you knew, and your work looks something like what I have over on the right. If it doesn't, please be sure to raise your hand and ask a question, okay? All right, let's look at an example, uh, word problem. East Middle School sold tickets for a school play. The price of an adult ticket was $3. Okay, so I know adult ticket and $3. And the price of a student ticket was $1. Write an expression that represents the total amount of money collected. Okay, so I know adult tickets are $3. So if there's one adult that went to the play, that would just be $3, right? If there were two adults that went, it would be $6, because I would have 3 plus 3. But what if I had, like, 10 adults that wanted to go. How would I find that? I'd have to either do 3 plus 3 plus 3 all the way until I added 10 threes together, or I could say 3 times 10, right, to find out the price of adult tickets. Since I don't know how many adults are going, I'm going to use a variable. I'm going to use A for adult tickets. And then I have to add however much money is earned with the student tickets, right? So if one student goes, that's $1. Two students go, that's $2. If three students go, that's $3. If 100 students go, that's $100, right? Because it's each student is $1. So I'm going to say plus 1 and then S to represent how many students go. 
is that I'll multiply 1 times however many students. And that's my expression. That's all I have to do on this page. But then this next page, I'm going to take that information. So this was our expression from the last slide. And now I want to say suppose 70 adult tickets. So 70 adult tickets and 85 student tickets were sold. How much money was collected? So I'd say 3 times 70, because there were 70 adults, plus 1 times 85 for the students. So 3 times 70 is 210, plus 1 times 85 is 85. And then I add those two together to find out that the grand total was $295 earned for the play. Okay, now you get to try a problem like that. So we have the Read It Bookstore is advertising a sale. The price of a hardback book is $9.50, so practice underlining, and the price of a paperback book is $4.50. Write an expression that can be used to find the total amount of money spent at the bookstore. So this is just like the play example we just did. So go ahead and try this. Good luck. Hopefully you ended up with 9.5H plus 4.5P to represent the hardcover and paperbacks. So when I wrote it, I included the zero there because we're talking about money. If you included the zero, great. If you didn't include the zero, that's also okay. They're both correct. Now you want to take that expression from that last slide and now I want to say suppose Emily buys five hardback books and four paperback books. Find the total amount she spent at the bookstore. Good luck. All right, hopefully for this question when you plugged in five hard back books and four paperback books, you ended up at a total of $65.50. If not, please be sure to reach out for some help, and I'm more than happy to help you, and I hope you have a wonderful day.